we've both been up in arms about who they're recruiting and why they're recruiting, particularly on the defensive backfield. Because mm. I'm going, you just got a commitment from an outstanding cornerback, defensive back, called Dante Manning. Six foot one, 175, going to get larger. He is the only defensive commitment in the 2020 class. But before Grinch got here, you had two. Both of those yeah. kids were six feet tall. And for a corner, that's pretty good. That's pretty tall. The idea that you can land a bunch of Ryan Watts types, six foot three types, is fallacy because those guys end up being Theo Weiss and Jane Hazelwood and playing wide receiver. Watts is different in that not only does he want to be a corner, it's who he is in his DNA, and he's six foot three, so he's going to be as widely coveted as an Elias Ricks, as a and six foot as a six you're right. Corner. You're but, right, but, but they're they're getting a chance. They're going to get a chance to land some of these guys. That's the crazy but, part. Well, about but but if you're going yeah, to look at a prototype, yeah. right? If you're yeah. looking at a prototype, look at Texas. As much as I hate to say that, look at what Texas has on the back end. Chris Boyd, big long cornerback. PJ Locke, Caden Stern. Those guys made that defense go and let Gary Johnson and those three defensive linemen get after the quarterback because they were able to be physical and run with folks. So as much as it sucks, Oklahoma's going to start recruiting like Texas does a DB and running a similar scheme. It's just you're going to have four guys on the line of scrimmage instead of three, which is the way that I would do it. And we know this works because Gary Patterson's doing it with guys that are already the size of Oklahoma's defense today. And that's the other yeah. part about it that's really, really frustrating is I would look at the defense like you would look at the defense last year, and I would say Gary Patterson has athletes – that are the same size as OU's, and OU's athletes are better than the ones at TCU, and yet, until last year, TCU's defense was pretty good, right? You get a Jason Barrett yeah. to come through there, and all of a sudden, you be world beater. Do you think that that's inaccurate? No, I'm, I'm, I agree with you. The, you. You want to know the ironic thing about the whole deal? Yeah. You know who else is doing the exact same thing? Are you going to say it, or are you going to... I said Brent Venables. I whispered Brent Venables. I didn't want to Brent Venables. Okay, Brent Venables can recruit whatever he wants, but yeah, you're right. Mackenzie Alexander is the guy that comes to my mind because he's, they're, they're, their DBs are so big. They're enormous. But same thing with Bama, right? Yeah. Uh, the same thing with Alabama because that's what, what – LSU. Right. But I was just making a joke because it's ironic that and everybody's up arms because Venables, is, Venables did that previously. Like he had big corners. Like they weren't – like. Big, but they were six foot six one guys, and that's what he was playing with before he got fired at OU. They were like, "Well, we can't do that. We need these fast guys out there." So they did that. That didn't work. Now we're back to these long, lanky, physical guys again, and that's what everybody wants. Like OU fans cannot make their mind up on what they they just want something that works. Like no, no, no. Good. OU fans make their mind up very well. It's just give me a top ten defense. That's what. Yeah, that's what I mean. Is. They want something that works, but yeah. I, mean, I get it. But. No, I mean, and you and we're making these points, but also I got to point out the Jim Thorpe Award winner last year was five foot ten. Okay, so your size sure. argument goes out the window if the dude can flat out play. You know what? I talked to I I talked to somebody that about that, and I was told OU will recruit. Guys that size, if they are an elite guy. And well, I mean, but that's, just, that's my point, though. DeAndre Baker was not considered elite coming out of high school. True. He came to, to Georgia. He got coached up. And he's the kind of guy that hasn't given up a touchdown pass <laughs> since 2016. So a lot of that is coaching, right? If, if not all of no, it. Yeah. So, yep. so Roy Manning, Alex Grinch, go earn your paycheck is the way that I look at it. Because if DeAndre Baker can be the best DB in college football, there's no reason that Parnell Motley, that Trey Brown – that Buki, that Woody Washington, that anybody that with any sort of ability on OU's roster today can't be the same. Yep. And, well, you know, the funny thing is, and the difference in what we're hearing from the staff, even last night when we went to post-practice, was they would say, they're not where we need them to be, obviously. You know, and Coach Odom said, look, we're, like, in year three as far as what we're putting in and stuff like that already because these guys are wanting to be good. And they're picking things up, and there's progress there, and we're happy with where they're at. But it's not, we can't, it's not, it's not acceptable still. And that's not what we want. And he said, that's our job. Right. That's our job as coaches right. to make sure they are where they're at. And, and Manning said the exact same thing. He goes, we're further along than we thought we would be. But it's our job to make sure we're even further along. And, and that, that's my job as a coach. That is absolutely the, the attitude that you, I want from a defensive coordinator because he's saying, I, I wrote about this too. 
he doesn't say they were bad in 2018. He says we were awful. You know, yeah. he takes ownership for things that he was not here for. You know, and he and he takes that 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 hurt and that loss to his heart, and he makes it his own, and he channels it through his kids, going, "We're not going to be this bad next year." All right, yeah, we, we're going to be better because this is this is ridiculous that Oklahoma ranks in the d dead last in pass defense. There's no reason for OU to rank dead last in anything yeah. ever. You know, and I, I love that. So let's see that attitude work out. Let's see what that looks like come preseason camp. Let's see what that looks like going into the 2019 season. Now, I agree, but I, I want to add one more thing. Please. Just the, the, the Riley, you know, the funny thing about this deal is Riley is coming out and saying, I know Deacons looks good, you know, there's so much better, blah, blah, blah. You can tell there's more continuity. Then Grinch comes out there, 129. Right. We have these. I mean, like he just right. refuses to just. He refuses to say, "Hey, man, we look actually pretty good out there." I mean, we got some pretty good athletes, but he he refuses to acknowledge the fact. And some people are reading that in to like, and, and I've seen it on Twitter. Like, Grinch thinks that these guys suck, and I was like, "No, no he doesn't. No, no. He publicly, he pub behind the scenes, he's patting them on the back. Right. Publicly, he's saying they need work because he wants to keep them grounded because he knows they're going to read." press clippings which is exactly the way to do it yep and he wants to make sure those press clippings keep them humble you know grounded and humble and that's exactly he's doing exactly the right way that you're supposed to do it as a coach and not building these guys up too much right um questions or answers about the 2020 recruiting class more questions okay. than answers what do you got i have more answers oh um, i know that people that a boy yeah, well, I mean, I have the advantage of talking to these kids off the record, so that's kind of cheating, but yeah. Um, I, I don't call it cheating. I do that all the time. Yeah, I mean. Yeah. <laughs> you so you it, chat it, with who you chat with. Like, that's just part of it. Yeah, that's true. Um, yeah, I got more answers. Um, Oklahoma is going to have a really, really, really good 2020 class, and I think Oklahoma fans are going to like it. Yeah, that, that's, how it too, that's how it feels. That's how it feels. My question, though, still revolves around – Defensive tackle recruiting. Yeah, that that's the one. That, that's one I have. Uh, uh, okay, I'll say I have questions, but when people ask me like who they're recruiting, I, I name like four off the top of my head really quick that I think they have, um, you know, a decent shot with. Uh, so I mean, I answered that yesterday on the board, and now that I say I answered it quick off the top of my head, I just went blank on the guys. Just so check I'm, the board. I'm going. Yeah, I'm actually going there right now check to tell you who they I, are. I'll tell you what. You check the board right quick, and I'm going to fill in with, hey, man, I understand that defensive tackle situation as it is today is all but a cluster because when you looked at the depth and the depth that they trust, you really got two and a half guys there. I'm not going to say yeah. who the half is, but the two are Mark, uh, or, excuse me, Neville Gallimore and Dylan Famatau, right? People really – but. I look at Dylan Valmadon, I saw a guy that picked up two defensive holding penalties last year, which is really difficult to do, but he managed to do it. And in Neville Gallimore, when he's when he's on, he's on oh my God, he's, he's amazing. But Rich even said he's going to be an All-American. He said that guy could be an All-American. But, he but he's got to be on for a full season, and he hasn't been. Yeah, it's true. Because if he gets hurt, and we, we got to kind of count on it now because that's just been the way it goes, who's going to step up? And now you're asking me. Guys like Marcus Hicks and perhaps Corey Robertson to be those dudes as, def as, right. as true freshmen. And, yeah, they can blow up and they can do it and they'll fit into the system and they'll put on the weight. But playing college football at that level, at that position, is still difficult, especially yeah. when you're a true freshman. Like I wrote a piece referencing that Quentin Williams did the same thing. Quentin Williams was a defensive end at Alabama. And then Deron Payne went into the draft and the two defensive ends were coming back. And he went to Saban, and his defensive coordinator said, hey, coach, I want to get on the field. And if I can get on the field at defensive tackle, I'm moving to defensive tackle. And they said, cool, go to defensive Put tackle. Some right, and they got him in there with his nutritionist. They got him in the weight room. And he played at about 310. He went through the combine at about 303. But he was 6'3", 310. Marcus Hicks is 6'5", and he'll probably be up around 270, 275 by the time uh, yeah, he's going to be a ball. That kid's going to be on play. Yeah, he's going to be good. But I still contend Quentin Williams had two years in the system in Alabama before he became the guy that he is. Yeah. So to ask Marcus Hicks to be that caliber of defenseman is a lot. 
Not that I mean, he can't they, do it, but it's going to take a couple of years. I think I still think that Q Overton is going to be a good player in this, just because it's going to fit him as far as what he does well. Right. And that I think eventually um, they're going to get to that point to where the, I think they have three or four guys that can play. I think they're they're probably too deep at the defensive tackle. That's about it right now. Now, obviously, when the 2019, they're going to be three deep, but it's it's stretching the three deep is, is where we're at here. But as far as the 2020 goes, um, Princely Imanelian is a guy that is going to be able to put on some weight. Um, he's about, um, let's say, about 6'3", 6'4", 240 right that now. That dude's taking a lot of trips to Texas, though, man. And even as I talk about he's, it. He just, he just visited OU, like, last week. I hear you. Yeah. But he's been up to OU. His dad wants him at OU. I'm wondering if we got a Cam Rising situation though. Yeah, uh, the, there's potential there, but I don't know that I don't know that he's sold on um, Texas as much as it's he's, he's but he has a, he lives next to Texas, so that's why he can go there. Right. Um, but Not he's been to Oklahoma school. quite a bit, quite a, a lot actually, and he's going to be coming up again this summer. Um, there is uh, Alfred Collins, who's you know mom played at Texas, but he is a guy that I think has potential to be, you know, in the 260, 270 range, and that 280. And that's kind of what you're going to get with the defensive tackles in a, you know, format. For people who need to understand that you're not going to get, 290, you know, 295 is, is the limit. Yeah, that's a, it's a little much sometimes. Yeah, two, 295 a, is the limit, and you got to be tall. Yeah. You know, Gallimore uh, gets away Alex with Lemon. because he's an athlete, but. 295 is where they want you on where where, where they're they're going to get you down to that yeah. and they're going to ask you to stay under it. Yep. Alex Lemon is um a guy Juco um that has a chance to be really really he's super athletic. He's long has just never been like he's been in the weight facility. He's uh, transferred out. And he likes Arizona State a little bit but and it's committed to them but I think Oklahoma has a chance to flip him. Yeah. Um and then one of my favorites in this class cuz he's so raw is Blaine Toll, and I don't know that he's he's not a defense. Obviously, he's not a defensive tackle, but he's a guy that's going to be a Dan Cody type guy, just because he's so long and athletic. This is the number one raw. recruit in the state of Arkansas, folks. Uh, folks. Yeah, that's, and that's, he loves and, OU. And his, and his dream school got flipped by like four of us. <laughs> after yeah, I mean, even the Arkansas, <laughs> even the Arkansas people flipped. The second OU offered that guy. Oh my so. god, no, it's great. It's funny. He loves OU so much, so he's he, there's a. I'll, I'll just say, I mean, the guy's going to be. Part of the 2020 class, if things stand as they are 